Did you bulk up a little bit for yeah, this? I, did. I felt yeah. like you did. I was watching, I was like, I think he bulked up a little bit. What, what did you bit. do? Just lifted heavy things. Yeah. And I ate a lot. Lots of roids. Um, yeah. <laughs> While I was watching Dune 2 last week, something caught my eye. The movie was definitely epic, but so was Fade Rotha's impressive physique. But check out the development on the upper back and abs of Austin Butler. The dude is looking svelte, and this is something that a lot of guys could accomplish naturally. Lots of roids. Um, yeah. <laughs> today, I'm going to help you out understand a massive misconception that 99% of guys get wrong about their abs, and I'm going to show you my top two exercises for building a juicy set of abs that pop like the knob Aaron. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll even give you a free training plan you can use to take your abs to the next level. I want abs. <laughs> We'll start by clearing up three things that most guys get horribly wrong about their abs. It's an unholy trinity of sinful misunderstanding. Abs are made in the kitchen, abs are mostly genetic, and your abs don't really change all that much. Oh, look at those abs. Everyone here has a six pack. Well, yes, your abs are made in the kitchen, meaning if you have too much body fat or a high enough body fat percentage, there's gonna be a layer of fat covering your abs, which is gonna make them appear less defined until you lower your body fat percentage by monitoring and modifying your food intake. You're just not gonna see them. I guess I'll lose the weight then. But isn't the same thing true for literally any other muscle on your body? So why are we making some kind of special exception for the abs and saying, oh yeah, these ones are definitely made in the kitchen, but not my quads, not my biceps, not my triceps, anything else. And yes, the shape of your abs is mostly genetic. Whether you have the four pack or the six pack or the fabled eight or even 10 pack, got the abs, buddy, the six pack. That is mostly genetic, along with how much fat you tend to store around your midsection. But again, isn't the same thing true for literally every muscle in your body, where it inserts, how it's shaped, how much fat you generally store in that area? Not to mention the fact that your genetics are completely out of your control. There's really not anything you can do about it. So while yes, you need to recognize that genetics are a factor here, it's kind of a moot point because there's nothing you can do about it. Now, my experience, most guys who think they can't meaningfully alter the size and appearance of their abs have just never taken a professional and serious attempt at training them properly. And I'm not talking about five minute bicycle kick and flutter kick circuits here. I'm talking about the serious type of training that you do for literally any other muscle in your body that you want to grow. The type where the muscle is stretching and then shortening, ideally against some load like gravity or added load of dumbbells, plates, and barbells. And importantly, that load or the number of reps you do or how much weight you use or the number of sets you do needs to increase over time so we continue driving adaptations for those abs to get bigger. If you want to see significant changes to the size of your abs, you cannot keep treating them as an afterthought, stupid little thing that you throw at the end of your workout. By the way, having bigger abs is a huge advantage because they push up against the skin and even at higher body fat percentages, if you're a little bit fluffier, they just appear more visible and you're more defined. You may even have a blurry four pack or some outline of some abs, even when you get north of 15% body fat. And seriously, you gotta stop following the bullshit blog post healthline.com or wherever this comes from that just doing enough squatting, bench pressing and deadlifting is enough to work your abs. Well, yes, technically they they do train your abs. That's really not enough to give a meaningful stimulus to help them grow. I mean, think about your arms, for example. If you really wanted to have the biggest possible biceps and triceps that you could, you do direct arm training because you wanna blast those things and give them a very clear stimulus and tell them to grow. Okay, now that we've got you on board with serious ab training, let me show you my two favorite exercise families or groups of exercises for training that rectus abdominis or that six pack muscle. First up, we have the sit up family. And this includes all exercises where you are anchored at the waist or below and you're moving your rib cage towards your pelvis using your abs, which by the way, is the only thing that your abs know how to do. Pulling your rib cage towards your pelvis or that spinal flexion where your back is starting to round is the primary action or movement of your abs. And a lot of people say, okay, well, it also generates trunk stiffness and it aids in strength development and athletic capabilities and it's good for your low back health. Okay. That's all great and those are all downstream effects, but how do the abs do that? They do that by pulling your ribs towards your pelvis or rounding your lower back. That's all they know how to do. It's on or it's off. Now the sit-up family has three primary exercises that I wanna share with you today. And from most beginner to most advanced, here's what they are. The first one is a feet anchored sit-up. You're gonna place your feet under an anchored machine or a set of dumbbells and drive your chest up towards the ceiling, curling your ribs again up towards your pelvis, crunching at the abs. I like to really control the descent portion of these and avoid fully relaxing at the bottom. With a good control technique where I go all the way down, 
I can devastate my abs just doing a handful of bodyweight reps. And if I wanna hold a 25 pound plate or dumbbell, I can do that too. Some folks will actually use a reaching technique here where they reach overhead, either just body weight or holding a dumbbell or a plate. And some people kind of like to angle that weight so it feels like they're really pushing against the weight the whole time with their abs and line up the force curve a little better. That's some real nerdy shit. That's some algebra, but I'll just tell you to go figure it out for yourself and give it a try. See what feels best. Number two here is the glute ham device thigh anchored sit-ups. You lock your thighs under the thigh pad, you clench your butt or your glutes, and then you extend your spine backward over the glute ham device and you bring your chest back up just like a normal sit-up. You can hold a dumbbell against your chest or against your chin. You could do the same thing with a plate. And honestly, most people are going to struggle just to do these body weight to start. They're really that hard for your abs and you have just so such a long runway with these where you can just keep loading it up and up and up and up. And thirdly, we've got the GHD feet anchored sit up. You just level up your GHD sit up by making the lever longer. By locking your feet into the pad, you're increasing the moment arm and increasing the amount of force that goes through your abs. And again, I like to just come all the way down to parallel here, controlling that descent before coming back up. But some folks will actually stretch all the way back, fully extending their spine and really stretching out their abs in the bottom position, which I think is probably a really good idea for growing your abs. But in my case, personally, I find I just get a little bit too much discomfort when I do that, and it takes away from the overall stimulus of this exercise. Let's move on to the second family of ab exercises. Leg lift type movements are where your body is anchored above the waist, and you are bringing your pelvis up towards your ribcage from the bottom half up. And again, in this family, we have three exercises I want to share with you, ranging from most beginner to most advanced. First is the reverse crunch, where you're lying on your back, and you are holding a plate or dumbbell or some kind of stationary machine overhead, initiating the movement by contracting your abs, you're gonna pull bent knees up towards your chin and curling your pelvis all the way up towards your rib cage. Imagine you're curling up your body like a shrimp on a barbecue, and then you just slowly control your weight all the way back down until you reach the floor and repeat. Number two is the decline reverse crunch. Using an incline bench, you're gonna secure your upper back against the bench by pulling yourself in towards the bench, and then you're just gonna repeat the same reverse crunch motion where your upper body is anchored and you pull your pelvis up towards your rib cage, really squeezing your abs for a full moment at the top, getting that peak contraction before slowly lowering yourself all the way back down to the start position and repeating. A cool part of this is you can just make this exercise more difficult by slowly increasing the angle of the incline on the bench until you're nearly vertical. Number three is the hanging leg raise slash knee raise. This is everyone's favorite ab exercise to completely fuck up in the gym. They just get way too focused on the name, hanging knee raise, and they start focusing on just lifting their knees at every cost. And it ends up taking away from the direct ab work that they could be getting. If you are the type of person who normally feels your hip flexors right in the front of your thighs or your hip crease, getting tired before your abs are getting tired on this exercise, something needs to change. Again, just a reminder to focus on the primary movement of the rectus abdominis, spinal flexion. You want to think about curling your pelvis up towards your rib cage. You want to make the distance between, let's say, your belt buckle or your mons pubis and your rib cage as small as possible. And a great tool to help you understand this and really force you into a great position is the Roman chair implement. This machine gives you kinesthetic feedback because you can actually feel when your lower back is lifting up and rounding off the pad, which is a really good thing because that shows me that you're rounding your lumbar spine or your lower spine by curling up. It also gives you the benefit of reducing the grip demands that you would typically get in an actual hanging knee raise or leg raise, which can be kind of a limiting factor for a lot of people. And it just takes away from your overall ability to focus on maximally contracting your abs. Now, what should you do with all this information? If you really do want to grow your abs as much as possible so that they appear more visible at higher body fat percentages and really super pop when you get leaner, then try something like this. On day one, choose one of the sit-up variations. And do it for two to four sets something like oh, 08 to 15 reps taken relatively close to failure. And then on the second day of the week where you're coming in to train your abs, choose one of the leg lift variations. Maybe we do that for two to four sets of 10 to 20 reps. Again, taken close to failure. You're gonna try this for six weeks, aiming to consistently push your performance higher in the gym, adding load, adding reps, or increasing the difficulty of the exercise variation that you're using, and just assess your progress and, and see how things are moving. If you're getting stronger over time and maybe even seeing some visual results, fantastic, things are working. As your abs adapt to that training stimulus, they'll get bigger and they'll get stronger, and before you know it, you'll be fighting to the death with Paul Atreides using only a knife. I also thought it was awesome how they described Fade Rotha as highly intelligent, narcissistic, psychotic, sociopathic, and sexually vulnerable. I mean, come on. If you saw someone with that in their Tinder bio, wouldn't you swipe right? Is swipe right the one where it's like you're matching with them? I forget. Lovely Fade.
Anyways, I'm Mateo from rsrank.com. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like this kind of thing and you want to see more good stuff just like it. I left the free training plan in the description below so you can grab the spreadsheet and make sure to like the video while you're hanging out there. Any questions about app training stuff, leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.